After careful consultation with my advisors, including the Joint Chiefs of Staff, I believe there is a way. Let me share with you a vision of the future which offers hope. It is that we embark on a program to counter the awesome Soviet missile threat with measures that are defensive. Let us turn to the very strengths in technology that spawned our great industrial base and that have given us the quality of life we enjoy today. What if free people could live secure in the knowledge that their security did not rest upon the threat of instant U.S. retaliation to deter a Soviet attack, that we could intercept and destroy strategic ballistic missiles before they reached our own soil or that of our allies. The results of High Frontier are to be found in this book. And the principal results are that we are able to move from a, the old strategy of mutual assured destruction, which denied the United States the ability to protect itself, and to do it while at the same time opening up space so that we can tap the enormous economic potential of space. Now, some time ago, we went public with High Frontier, and we were happy to find that we got a very good response from the press, from the Washington Post, the St. Louis Globe Democrat, and others. But there was one journalist who summed up High Frontier, I think, better than any of the others. And I'd like you to see what he had to say. Strategic, diplomatic, technological, and even philosophical issue of the decade. Strategic, diplomatic, technological, and even philosophical issue of the decade. Using a triple-layered non-nuclear defense. The system consists of three elements deployed in sequential zones. The first is a global ballistic missile defense a low earth orbit network of space trucks or carrier vehicles that deploy clusters of small non-nuclear interceptors capable of neutralizing enemy ICBMs during the initial boost phase. A second level defense catches most of the missiles that get through the first layer. Finally, a ground-based point defense system is designed to enhance survivability of our existing Minuteman forces. Separately and together as an integrated system, each element of this defensive plan acts to increase U.S. ability to survive and respond to a Soviet first strike. The USS Constitution, anchored in Boston Harbor, and still seaworthy, and recall the era of clipper ships. Industry does have to be assured that its investments will be protected. This has been a requirement throughout history. I believe that space will enable us not only to expand our means of communication, which is already a major market for satellites, as much as $25 billion by the year 2000, but also to devise new ways to process materials in space. The solar power satellite is one of the few major options capable of supplying energy on a global scale. It works by using the solar energy in geosynchronous orbit 22,300 miles away, converts it into microwaves, and then a beam is sent back to Earth. We are starting to work on the assembly of these large space structures by means of beam builders, which are capable of constructing large structures in space. We are experiments. This is space shuttle so that we learn how to proceed from here. The cost of building these solar power satellites can be made competitive with other alternatives, whether they be nuclear or coal power plants. We are today convinced that it can be environmentally benign and be one of the major approaches to meeting our future energy needs. And the high frontier gives us a chance to leapfrog past the huge Russian army to regain our national security through developments in space. In the future, he who controls space may well control the future of mankind. We have a chance through the high frontier using existing technology to develop a space program that is absolutely necessary to our survival and that will give us a chance to move past the Russians to assure our own nation and freedom a future on this planet. When most Americans learn of the High Frontier strategy of assured survival, they ask, why is it not already in effect? It is because our leaders need broad public support to change national policy. We've been sitting here in the United States fat, dumb, and happy.
adventure, he who controls space may well control the future of mankind. We've been sitting here in the United States, fat, dumb, and happy. 